Okay kids, it's time for books. So cuddle up to mum or dad and let's rock and read. Today I'll be reading you another two chapters from my first school beneath the cloud of doom. Chapter three, up and down. Up, said DJ. Down, replied Kathy, who sat next to him. Up, DJ repeated. Down, Kathy insisted. In truth, Kathy didn't know what DJ was talking about. She just liked to argue. No matter what DJ, DJ said, she always said the opposite. Up, DJ said again. Down, Kathy insistently replied. Shh, said Dana, who sat behind Kathy. I'm trying to read. Kathy turned around. Danny's face was streaked with tears. Why are you crying? asked Kathy. Dana showed her the book she'd been re reading. The Lost Giraffe. So, said Kathy. The giraffe is lost. Dana sobbed. Well, what did you expect, stupid? asked Kathy. She didn't like Dana any more than she liked DJ. Up, said DJ. Down, snapped Kathy. Dana, Kathy, DJ, said Miss Jules. You're making a lot of noise for silent reading. Sorry, said DJ. I can't. Up, oh, help it. I have the up oh, hiccup. Kathy turned red. She had been arguing with a hiccup. Has this ever happened before, Miss Jules asked him. I've had the up oh, hiccups before, said DJ. But they up oh, always went up away. Stand your head and drink a glass of water, Mom suggested. Eat a lemon, said Jenny. Hold your tongue while you say the Pledge of Allergy Allegiance, said Joy. DJ tried the suggestion. When he finished, he'd his mouth was puckered, his shirt was wet, and he still had the hiccups. He felt, he felt very patriotic, however. I think you better go see Dr. Pickles, Miss Jules. Kathy will take you. Kathy hopped out of seat, glad she wouldn't have to read. Come on, dummy, she said, and led DJ out the door. Yep, hiccup, DJ. Down, said Kathy. She couldn't help herself. Dr. Pickles' real name was Dr. Pick L. His office was on the fourth floor. Kathy knocked on the door. Dr. Pickle opened it. He had a pointy beard and wore glasses. Yes, he said. Stupid here got the hiccup, said Kathy. Up, oh, hiccuped DJ. Down, said Kathy. Dr. Pickle rubbed his chin. Very interesting, he muttered. Although he was looking at Kathy, not at DJ. Very, very interesting. He told Kathy to wait and invited DJ inside. And he smiles too much, too, Kathy called just before the door shut. DJ sat down on a couch. Dr. Pickle sat across from him. He held a long gold chain. On one end hung a green stone, shaped like a tool. Dr. Pickle gently swung the stone back and forth. Watch the pickle, he said. His voice was warm and soothing. DJ's eyes, DJ's eyes moved back and forth the stone. I will count to five, and then you will fall into a deep, deep sleep. Dr. Pickle slowly counted. One. Two. Boom! DJ fell off the couch. Well, asked Dr. Pickle. DJ got up. He waited a moment. I think they're gone, cool, he said. Dr. Pickle led him to the door. First thing we learned in physiatry school, he said, patting DJ in the head. My haircuts are all gone, DJ told Kathy. Who cares, said Kathy. Wait, said Dr. Pickle. Would you mind stepping inside my office, young lady? Me? asked Kathy. Please, said Dr. Pickle. But he's the sicko, said Kathy, pointing at DJ. Please, Dr. Pickle repeated. Kathy shrugged, then entered the cancer's office. That beard is really ugly, he said. I guess your face must be even worse, huh? DJ sat on the floor in the hallway with his back against the wall waiting for Kathy. He smiled happy that, the hiccup, that his hiccups were gone, as though he missed them a little bit too. Hiccups are annoying. But kind of fun. Sometime later, the council's door opened. Thank you, Dr. Pickle, said Kathy, calling him by his proper name. You're, sorry, thank you, Dr. Pickle, said Kathy, calling him by his proper name. You are very wise, and I like your beard. That's very nice of you to say, Kathy, said the school counsellor. She stepped out the door. Hi, DJ, she greeted him. Thanks for waiting. You're a good friend. The smile left DJ's face. Something was definitely wrong with Kathy. Let's go up, said Kathy. Sorry, let's go up, said DJ. Yes, up, said Kathy agreed. Now who was really worried. Okay, the second chapter I'm going to read today is chapter four, 
can sit as a paper clip. Read a book, write a book report, draw a picture. That was the assignment Mr. was put up on the board. Danny's picture showed a giraffe studying the map. She drew a large question mark over the giraffe's head. Her book report only had to be one page, but she had written two whole pages. The Lost Giraffe, the lost giraffe was her favourite book ever. Now all she needed was a paper clip. She searched her desk. She found quite a few pencils, mostly broken. There were lots of eraser bits and crayon nubs. There was also a crumb-covered pink piece of paper that was that had come off the bottom of a cupcake. Oh no, 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 she moaned as she continued to search. She raised her hand. Yes, Dennis, Miss Jules, I need a new paper clip. But I gave you one at the beginning of the year, Miss Jules. I know, Miss Jules. I'm sorry, I just can't find it. Miss Jules sighed. I'm very disappointed in you, Dana. I need a paper clip too, said Joe. Miss Jules got him. What did you do with the one I gave you, she meant? I think I used it on the science helmet, said Joe. I handed that back yesterday, Miss Jules reminded. Didn't you save the paper clip? I guess not, Joe admitted. Baby was finished at the last piece. Pay part of the picture. Paper clip, paper clip, please, she said without looking at her work. One for me too, said Calvin. Miss Jules slammed her hand on the desk, on her desk. Do you think paper clips grow on trees, she asked. I don't know, said Calvin. I gave each one of you a paper clip at the beginning of the year. It was your responsibility to take care of it. She opened the desk drawer. She opened her desk drawer, took out her paper clip bo box and opened it. There are only six left, she said, shaking her head in dismay. Oh, can I have one, said Joy. I can't find mine. Miss Jules was too angry, she replied. She moved to the front of the room. You children are so spoiled, she said. Do you have any idea what it takes to make just one paper clip? She held one of her last remaining paper clips. Look at the perfect double loop and the way it gleams in light, almost like a mirror. Her anger seemed to melt away as she marveled at the magnificent metal master's feet. It is a lot of very talented people and years of training in hard work, she explains. First, there's the wire maker. Paper clip wire has to be just right. Not too stiff, but not too wiggly either. Then there's the wire polisher, she continued. That who gives the paper clip a special gleam. And the wire cutter, who cuts each wire to the precise length. And finally, and more important, the ma master bender. The bender carefully bends the wire to the perfect double loop. She put her hand over her heart. Sadly, in these rush, rush, hurry, hurry days, not too many young people will study the art of paper clip bending. There are only a handful of master vendors left in the whole world, and who knows, in 10 or 20 years, there might be not be any. Everyone will have to switch to staples. That is so sad for Dana. Miss Jules gave the paper clip Dana. Now don't lose it. I won't, Dana promised. Let me see, said Baby. Dana, Dana proudly showed Baby a new paper clip. It's so beautiful, said Baby, admiring the double loops. I've never noticed before. I'm going to be a paperclip bender when I grow up, Smith, said Calvin. Miss Jules smiled at Calvin. She had never been more proud of a student. And that is the two chapters I was, I'm going to read to you today. I hope you enjoyed them. Bye!